Let us study Feynman rules. Uh, the previous class we have shown that T matrix element is I times four dimensional integral of interaction Lagrangian. And it was uh, decomposed into this kind of double integral where current J is coming in and a uh, particle is uh, propagating from Y to X and then it is a, it disappears as another current. And convention is that the Feynman propagator has a plus i factor and each current has a minus i over a factor. Okay. So any additional interaction will bring in df times j repeatedly. Okay. So in the momentum space, uh, the reason why we consider momentum space is usually in particle physics, uh, initial and final states are prepared to be the, in a momentum eigenstate. So it's uh, good to use uh, momentum space instead of configuration space. Our convention is that integral over space-time dimension does not have any 2 pi and instead in either x and p are conjugate either one of them has every factors of 2 pi or usually in quantum mechanics uh, some quantum mechanics book uh, they use just half of this factor in the momentum space and the other half of factor in the position space but in particle physics, we do not want to make use of over a factor in front of exponential because it is uh, easy to write. So it is conventional to pull out any 2 pi dependence, uh, erase any 2 pi dependence in the wave function. In that case, it's good to use in the momentum space integral, we put 2 pi h bar. h bar is uh, one in our case, so two pi each dimension. So current Jx and current Jy can be uh, fully transformed to the momentum space and this, uh, these are the momentum space represent representation and for simplicity I, I just introduced the same convention for the oscillating factor, just assuming that everything just like coming in. All right, so we already have obtained that Feynman propagator for the scalar particle is of this kind of form, right? Propagator is I df, right? Let's see. All right. So if I substitute these three, factor, these three factors into this integral, I can carry out the x and y integrals because the other part is independent of x and y. So we have momentum integral and the k1 and k2 integrals are there. And here, this factor comes in, the other factor here, and all of the exponential factors are pulled out and separated into two pieces which has x dependence and y dependence separately. Because it is x minus y, one factor has the same sign, the other one has different sign. Happen to be uh, our px dependence, x dependence, X dependence, X dependence here, here, they have the same sign, minus I. They are pulled out at K2 plus P, that X. And Y dependence, minus Y, this is plus Y. They have different sign. Because X integral and Y integral can both be done, they are actually the delta function, direct delta function. So I, let us replace them with delta k1 minus p here and the delta k2 uh, plus p. 
we write this and now we can integrate over k1 and k2 k1 integral gives k1 is equal to p and k2 integral gives k2 equals minus p okay. and it is allowed to have all kinds of home momentum right this means that p squared does not have to be m squared it is all possible if p squared equals m squared then it is a free particle then it becomes uh, a denominator acquires an imaginary part that means it becomes a real state but if it is not the case if p squared is not m squared the particle cannot be this intermediate particle cannot be measured because it is uh, its mass is uh, different from its own own mass real rest mass is m squared but whole momentum squared is not equal to m squared that then means uh, from that sense we say it is a virtual particle that propagate to represent the state that cannot be measured that cannot be measured okay in the sense of momentum space there is a, some current P this current P hits this particle in previously our current is just like in the case of photon this propagator had vector index mu nu something like that and it is contracted to the vector index of here and vector index of here and what's that this is a photon propagator from position y to x and at each point photon is attached to for example charged particle charged scalar particle then phi comes in and phi star comes out and photon is attached there so current is generated by the product of phi initial state and phi star final state the two product of two wave function coming uh, charged particle coming in and coming out and the vertex was the proportional to the momentum as far as we remember for the scale of charged scalar particle case we constructed like for example for the uh, free particle and then replace the covariant derivative with the gauge covariant derivative from there we have found that the current is psi star round mu uh, phi star round mu phi something like that and that is multiplied to photon wave function a mu something like that with the coefficient q that is the charge of that particle okay so due to some a kind of interaction phi comes in and phi goes out so phi star and there's a momentum transfer from this part to the photon and that momentum is transferred to the photon and then that momentum is transferred again to another phi and when this photon hits phi then its momentum changes let us just sum the whole of this momentum whole of this momentum to be represented by this guy and this okay then this current suppose we have momentum p and as soon as it disappears it is the whole momentum is transferred to this that is the virtual particle and then if this momentum is transferred to the final current convention is that incoming current has a positive sense and outgoing current has negative sense it's just like complex conjugate okay. so if I interpret the final state like that 
then we can interpret that at vertex P, uh, vertex at position X, and actually X is integrated over the whole space, suppose we have current with momentum P hits this point and disappears as the photon and photon propagates from here to there, then the whole momentum is transferred to there. And then, if the photon disappears as soon as it hits the current, that momentum is completely transferred to this current at this vertex Y. Okay? So we have incoming current with positive sense, the outgoing current, negative sense, then we can interpret like that. Suppose our initial state, in this case, we are allowed to have various kinds of momentum in the initial current and the final current. Suppose if we have initial current is just fixed monochromatic, the final current is, uh, this is initial and this is final current is fixed. Let's see what happens. In combination with uh, these two, for example, in, if we consider the charged scalar particle, its normalization is uh, usually n exponential minus i p dot x, something like that, this kind of form. But final state has usually the same normalization and exponential plus i this is initial, and final has a plus i p final dot x, something like that. If I make a product, then I have n squared exponential minus i p i minus p f dot x. So this p i minus p f is interpreted to be k i. I, I just consider the difference between the initial and final state. So if, if something comes in and comes out, and difference is a remnant, that remnant momentum is transferred, completely transferred to the photon and photon carries that momentum and hits the, the other particle that generates the current and then the factor is uh, absorbed into this current. So, in the sense that I have normalization n squared for the both currents and over a factor is just like minus i pi minus pf dot x and minus i ki minus kf dot x, uh, y, something like that. So, if you are interested in knowing what n is, then you might consider the phi star phi integrate over the space is for example one number of particles one then what will be the best choice of this overall factor including n that is just volume right if phi star phi is just one for single particle then normalization it can be chosen to be just a one of a square root volume something like that because the, this exponential factor just when it is multiplied to the complex conjugate then it becomes one all right so actually for this current each current has a product of two wave functions for the, each initial each final state so i can interpret this one as to be like that so if, if we have prepared the initial and final current uh, to be fixed with the momentum k1 and k2, then I don't have to integrate over k1 and k2. The, that integral disappears. Instead, still x and y integral have delta functions, right? But we do not have 2 pi to the fourth, 2 pi to the fourth in the denominators for the j and uh, jx and jy. So I'll find a result like that.
Still, we have two delta function, but we do not have k1 and k2. What we have to do is just integrate over p, then p is replaced with uh, p connects k1 and k2. So, p is the same as k1 and p is the same as k2 except for the over negative sign. So, p matrix element is uh, n to the fourth multiplied by 2 pi to the fourth power delta function. And this part is a similar form. In our derivation of uh, transition amplitude and invariant amplitude, remember when we studied the uh, time dependent perturbation theory, we have defined that 2 pi delta function, at least in one dimensional case, it was 2 pi energy delta function multiplied by invariant amplitude. This is, it is generalized form for the four dimensional case. Then 2 pi to the fourth power delta function multiplied by invariant amplitude. M is the T matrix element. Okay, so the result is that if I pull the 2 pi to the fourth power delta function with the normalization n to the fourth, the final result for the invariant amplitude is product of current sandwich, sandwiching the Feynman propagator. And one part is coming in, the other part is coming out. And K1 is coming in and transferred to this propagator and then this propagator emits the whole momentum to the, the other part of the current. Okay? Or, if we treat both of them are coming in, we can interpret that both of them are coming in, disappear. So, some of the two energy momentum must be zero. Right? It is just a transfer, transferring K1 to K2, that means they collide and disappear, something like that, right? This one means K1 plus K2, four in four dimension, this object is exactly zero for momentum, right? Let us recall the Feynman propagator that is integral over P, exponential minus I P dot X, Okay, what happens if I replace P by minus P? If we replace P by minus P, this is the same, right? And if we flip the up and down, there are four times that does not change anything, and this is even only this factor changes, it becomes exponential plus i p dot x, right? So, this is what? Substitute minus x to x. So, Feynman propagator for the scalar particle is the same even function in x. Okay, just like delta function delta x, right? This is even function in x. Actually, this, this guy, this denominator only, is the momentum space representation for the Feynman propagator, right? This Feynman propagator has just, is even in P. That's it. <laughs>